Assalamu alaikum everybody. Uh, so, yes, I'm wearing the same shirt. That's because I videotaped this all in the same day. Um, yeah, something very cool, cool happened also in Egypt, but I don't know if I'm ready to speak about it yet. Um, it's very deep. I need to think about it more, but basically, you know, it relates to the Quran and it's, uh, it's very, very cool. But I'm going to talk about something that happened that uh, <laughs> surprised me myself. Um, I'll, I'll basically tell you a story and add a few things, you know, a few different stories. It also happened, it all happened within the same day that were just interesting. Um, so I get back, I, I traveled nine hours to get from Tunis to Alex. Nine hours, okay? <laughs> and so, you know, from first we had to walk a ways. To get to, we rode the back of this pickup truck, and then we get in this big van, this microbus. Then I took, I walked about 500 meters to the metro, took that, and I took the train, and then I, I rode a cab, and then I got back. So, first interesting thing in the Cairo uh, train station, you have to pay 25 pastries or qurush, rush in uh, Amiya in, in uh, Egyptian colloquial Arabic to enter the bathroom. So it's like, imagine paying a quarter. That was very interesting. Uh, this is in Mahatta Tramsis. And you also, when one of my friends had the swine flu, I think I mentioned that in a previous post, uh, we have to pay 125 to just visit him. <laughs> it's like a tadkira. It's a ticket. Which is very interesting. Uh, people want to tip everywhere you go. Um, this guy led us to the wrong building when we went to the hospital and then he wanted to tip. They, they always say, you know, you know, uh, which is like, you know, may you be good every year, basically. Uh, and uh, police officers, you have to bribe them, which is very interesting. So when we travel, you have a bunch of police officers around us. And they'll say, no, you did this wrong or this wrong. And try to find things so you can bribe them. Very interesting. It's just a symptom of a greater problem. So I get to the train station at 1230. It's supposed to leave at 2. I bought the express because I wanted to get back. I've been exhausted. And we were seeing where the wild things are, um, me and uh, the people in my program. So what happened? I missed my train. Why? After waiting for an hour and a half. Uh, because I, I saw the train. It looked like the right train. There was a person sitting next to me who got on the train. He told me that was not going to Alexandria. And then I, I went, I physically rode the train, and the person told me, no, this is not the right train. The right train is uh, two platforms down. And I go to the other one, they're like, no, this is the غير مباشر, which means the indirect. It takes longer. It takes about an hour longer. Or supposed to, but apparently it took the same time. It just stops in Tanta for a little bit. And so I went back, and it had already been leaving. They wouldn't open the door so I could jump on. So I was not very happy. Um, I went to a police officer. I wrote this down, that's why I'm looking down. It's very confusing, maybe. So I went to this police officer. He led me to this dude who smoked this long cigarette. He looked like he was important. He took me to the information uh, kiosk who led me to this lady next to the tourist police. She led me to the tourist police, and then he led me back to the lady, and I raised my voice at her. I don't know if it was arguing or not, but I was just, uh, I was very angry and stressed out. <laughs> so, um... I raised my voice, and apparently when I raised my voice, I dropped the Amiya and I started speaking Fusha. So I was speaking to her in Fusha, she was trying to speak to me in English, and I was just like, yeah, I, I, and it was weird that I have to prove to everybody I'm American, uh, so that they would actually care about my problem. Took me, she took me back to the tourist police, and they basically told me, hey, sorry, nothing we can do, go buy another ticket, it was your fault. And she's like, you probably left. I was like, what, I'm American, I'm on time, da da da, but I'll get into what I said later. Um, then I went to the ticket counter, they led me to the police, who said, look, you can either uh, go through the bureaucracy, it'll take you two to three hours, but I suggest you just jump on the train, tell them I'm not paying one guinea, one pound to anybody, uh, you can you can handcuff me and just, just take me in when we get to Alex, but the train is moving right now. Uh, and he's like, they won't do anything to you. But then I went back to my place, I sat down, I was next to this respected guy who was like very mad that I missed my train. He's like, you missed your train. And then anyways, he was like, he was like, no, you just got to buy a new one. And I was like, you know what, I'm just going to jump on. I told him, he's like, no, do it the right way. Go through the system. So it's very interesting. You know, what do we do in life? And so I went back with this restricted man. He, went, he took me to the main supervisor's office to get it done right. I went to one guy. 
He led me to another. He looked important. He was answering all these phone calls, telling people what to do. When he found out I was American, he's like, this is not cool. And so he gave me to another guy who took me back to the tourist police. Um, now, that first guy, you know, we went to him. He led me to another guy. Well, this guy is a common, you know, he goes through the story. So I'm just going to call him important guy. So he took me back to the tourist police who said that I, he has to take me, you know, basically by hand, like walk right next to me and put me on the train. He was very mad, but he had this smile. It was like this, oh, I hate you. I told you you can't do it, and you're going to people above me. And so he gave me to one of his deputies who tr was trying to get out of it first, and then he went to this other guy with a walkie-talkie, and so, you know, everyone had left me but this these police officers, and he was basically talking with them, and they were whispering very low, but I could basically get the gist of what they were saying by the, by the hand motions and how they were, some reactions. He was trying to get out of it and saying, no, it was impossible. So I was just like, hey, if you have any problems, go to the main supervisor of the whole mahatla, the whole station. And so he just kept walking. He's like, no, this is impossible. We go to the station, and the, the important guy's on the phone. So this other guy, who's also a new guy, he's like, no, you can't do it. He's like, no, it is, I don't know. He said something with an Egyptian accent that basically meant it's not worth anything. My ticket is worthless. So finally, the guy who guaranteed everything got off the phone. He's like, no, I'm going with you. He takes me to this one guy who I thought was the conductor or, or someone important in the in the train. Turns out to be one of the guys who checks the tickets, and he's his boy. So they're really cool. And um, he's like, look, no problem. Uh, the train was, was getting ready to leave. He's like, just sit anywhere in second class because I bought a second class ticket. I jumped on, and the deputy police officer was with us the whole time. I ran. I found an open seat. I was well out of breath, and it took an hour long headache, but um, no, I'm going to try to post up the ticket. It's kind of hard to read because it's not very clear. You just have to kind of get used to where things are and ask people. But it wasn't my fault. They told me the wrong thing. Uh, my Arabic's not that terrible to the level where I misunderstood. Uh, in fact, the, the su main supervisor was like, do you really have U.S. citizenship? And I was like, I can pull it out because I have a, a photocopy in my uh, wallet just to be safe. You know, you should always do that. And... Um, and he's like, oh, I was just wondering because your Arabic's really good. So I started to, this is sad, but I had to start pretending to think of words, screw up, say full high instead of ammiya, you know, say formal instead of colloquial, and different things like that. Um, when I got mad at that lady, I said some stuff that I regret, but I'll share it because it just you know, has to do with, you know, how people get stressed out and to watch out for yourself. That, you know, what I told her was, mm, yeah, she said, look, the system has changed. And, and so basically, you know, I couldn't get a refund. And I was like, I told her in Fusha, you know, which is very formal language. I was like, no, the system didn't change because there is no system in this whole country. In fact, you people have no organization whatsoever. This whole country isn't organized. This is how you treat your guests and your foreigners who and your tourists who come and visit you. I was like, this is terrible. This is, I've never been treated so horribly in my life. <laughs> so I really regret that. On the train, uh, the guy came to check the tickets and I was like look I'm Tamam the American you know you should know who I am and luckily the other guy had been walking in because you know they, they check from uh, car to car and they met at, at our car and he's like oh that's the dude and so it was very cool I get back you know after the nine hour trip and I have to take my hepatitis A shot my second dosage because I've been taking everything but that I get to the Saidalia the pharmacy where you apparently buy it. it's not from a hospital and she just hands it to me she's like here's your vaccine and I tell her, what am I supposed to do with this? Aren't you going to administer it? Aren't you going to give it to me? Do you have shots? What am I supposed to do? She said, you have to go to the Mustashva. And I said, I'm in a hurry where the wild things are, you know. And uh, so she's like, just go to the hospital now. Like, I, I basically have no schedule, no life. Because it was cold. I was like, doesn't this have to be kept under a certain temperature? I can go tomorrow maybe. So I walked to the Mustashva and I just gave it to them. They didn't even know what it was, even though they took an hour analyzing it. Before putting it in, she's like, uh, this is hepatitis B, right? And I was like, no, it's A, wait. And I showed her on the, on the box, it said A. And so paid three and a half pounds, and she just gave it to me. I mean, it could have been heroin, could have been anything. She didn't even really know. And I was like, are you sure this is the second dosage, the right one? And she said, no. And so I just said, just uh, put it in, and they did. It kind of hurts right now. Just said, put it in, and I don't know. That's just life. So interesting things. There are some different things going on in this country. But I did get stressed out, but I'm great right now. And you just go through these moments. It's like a W curve. So take care. Assalamu alaikum.